When it comes to gaming mice, I recommend you look at the four main points. Shape, weight, sensor, and buttons. I specialize in first person shooters, so my reviews are more about whether a mouse will help you aim better, but the advice is suitable to MOBAs and RTS as well. By the details, the HyperX Pulsefire FPS looks like a top mouse for FPS. The shape is familiar and fairly safe for finger positioning. It only weighs about 94 grams, which is light for a large mouse, and it's well balanced. The buttons feel good with comfort grooves, and it has a top optical sensor, the 3310. So what's the problem? Well, this isn't a complete deal breaker, but it does make it harder to choose this over something similar. It's the sides. They're not angled in the right way. Let me demonstrate. Notice if I slowly release my grip, it slides out of my fingers. Here's the same test with the G403. Notice it just fell. That's because as soon as my grip became too loose, I simply lost the grip. On the pulse fire, it actually slides. And why is that a problem? Because we need an outward curve toward the top for when we lift the mouse. If you're flicking the mouse a lot, you want something to counter the lift force you're using to pick it up. Something to create a slight ledge. This has the outward curve going toward the bottom instead, the wrong way. You can still play with it, you just have to grip it tighter. And I don't think it will be as comfortable as other mice. I guess they were thinking it would help keep the fingers off the mouse pad and reduce drag, but if they're going to do that, they should use thin ledges at the base, not slide outward curves. Anyway, moving on, everything else is quite good. Here's a tour of the mouse so you know what it looks like. You probably recognize it as something similar to the old Microsoft mice, and some newer mice from other companies too. Everything on it feels decent and comfortable, other than the sides. The back is smooth plastic, and the sides have rubberized grips. And on the base there are two large mouse feet, and they glide smoothly. You'll note that the bottom slope is a little bit steep, and the hump is toward the middle. That makes it harder for smaller hands to fingertip grip. And this is a large mouse, as you can see here next to some other mice. It's very similar to the Death Adder, just wider. For measurements, the grip width is roughly 6.7cm. The overall length is about 127 and the height seems to be about 4.2cm. I generally recommend you find a mouse 60% of your hand size. The grip width seems to be the most important for aim, so if your hands are 10cm wide, you'd want a 6cm grip width. As this is 6.7cm at the fingers, it might be better suited to hands that are 11cm wide. Length is more about the grip you can use, so for palm grip I'd say between 18 and 20cm, 17 and 21 for claw, and above 19 for fingertip. Moving on to the buttons, here is a listen to the clicks. Left and right use arm run switches and feel like they have a bit of resistance, possibly just enough for heavy fingers. It's a large mouse so that makes sense. Mouse 3 is harder to press in, as usual, and it feels fairly standard. The scroll wheel is a bit light, the steps aren't too obvious, so it should be good for browsing but it's nothing special. The side buttons don't have much trouble and they're kind of small, so they work well enough. Very basic and to the point, and the DPI button is fairly out of the way behind the wheel. In the latency testing, it wasn't quite as responsive as the G403 except in one test, where the left button was faster than the right, and the DPI button has steps of 400, 800, 1600, and 3200. I think the buttons are good, they're not quite premium level, but nothing I'd complain about in game or in general use. For build when tapping it, there's no extra rattle, but there is a very slight rattle on the scroll wheel. Nothing major, I can barely hear it, so it seems fairly well built. I can't test the sensors in Quake Champions yet, but in Quake Live, the 3310 performs very well. Some people don't like the idea of using a 3310 now, but my main mouse still uses it and it's great. It handles rocket jumping just fine, and I can't make it spin out, even if I throw it really fast across the pad. Where there is an issue is in the tilt slam test, where you hold the mouse on its side and then slam it down really fast. Doing this, it's easy to make it spin out, but it's very rare that people have this issue. Before someone pointed it out, it had never happened to me. If you have had an issue with 3310s in the past, then you might need to get a mouse with a 3360 sensor. Zooming in for the sniper test, it handles pixel by pixel movement and it tracks smoothly. I tested this at 400 and 1600 dpi. I don't have an accurate acceleration test, but there appears to be none. And the liftoff distance is strangely high on cloth pads at two DVDs, but only one DVD on a hard pad. For responsiveness, I can't tell any real delay. Feels good to me. And in the line test, I see no jitter, angle snapping, or skipping. 
The liftoff movement is well controlled and there's no lens rattle. The cable is braided and about 1.8 meters long. It's not as flexible as I'd like, but it's still good enough and was no hassle in a mouse bungee. Now some Quake Champions highlights while I give my conclusion. So if it wasn't for the sides, this could be a top recommendation. It's about $50 on Amazon at the moment, which is fairly decent, but it's in direct competition with the Razer Death Adder, which has more features and a better shape. That makes it hard for me to recommend this one. While it is a good mouse, the shape is different in the wrong way. That's the risk companies run by making similar mice. They have to be much better than the competition to be looked at, and if they go against a fundamental rule like on the sides, they probably won't get picked. So who can I recommend this mouse for? Well, as said, the grip width is quite large, bigger than the Death Adder. So if you felt the Death Adder was a bit thin, and you don't mind the idea of the sloped sides, this may actually feel more comfortable to you. It also doesn't seem to have the sharp edges that can hurt people's ring fingers. They've done really well to get such a good product out as their first attempt at a gaming mouse. It's not quite there yet, but they're showing a lot of promise. So I look forward to seeing what they do next. So a big thank you to them for sending this out for review, and if you'd like to buy one, I'll leave the usual links in the description. Also check for the ways you can help support the channel, like my Twitch and Patreon. And as always, subscribe for more reviews and gaming videos, like this one, and I'll catch you in the next.